Hi, this is the fifth of our series of female food founders interviews, and I'm delighted to be here today with the founder of Planet Organic, Renee Elliott. She had a mission back in 1995 to push the organic and natural food area out of the niche it was in. Planet Organic is now the UK's largest fully certified organic supermarket and sells over 8,000 product lines in eight stores within the M25. So I'm here today to talk to Renee about changes in the organic market since the mid-90s, who her inspirations are, and also to talk about her brand new project, Beluga Bean. <laughs> well, how did you get into retail in the first place? Uh, it was never my dream to be a retailer, if you'd asked me when I was 10, but I had no idea what I wanted to do, and I went to university with no clue, whereas my sibs all went for a specific career. So it wasn't until I was probably 28 that I figured it out, and I was living in England at the time. I moved here when I was 21, straight out of uni. And what had happened is after working in, um, I was an English major, so I went into journalism. After doing that for a while, working in the wine trade, became a professional wine taster. I'd gone back to the States with my husband, who's English, and we did a six-month personal development program. And during that, I thought, okay, this is it. I'm going to choose something I love, and I'm going to start my own business, because I knew those things had to be true. And I saw the concept on the East Coast of America. There was, I walked into an organic supermarket and thought, oh my gosh, it pulls in everything that I believe in, in terms of doing things better. And I'd had this epiphany when I was 19 about the horrors of the meat industry in America, mm. and I was so shocked that no one was looking after my best interests mm -hmm. and ensuring that whatever was for sale was actually good food. Yeah. And two, that there wasn't an alternative to conventional mm -hmm. meat farmed in that way. Mm -hmm. So I had this idea of doing it better, but also that just because a lot of people do something doesn't mean it makes sense yeah. or that it's a good idea yeah. and a thought is not a fact. Mm -hmm. So I started on this I'm going to do things differently. Right. And it started when I was 19. So I ended up opening um, this organic supermarket in 1995. Yeah. And also because my mission, I had studied nutrition at university, okay. and that was a theme running right. through my life. Yeah. And it was about well-being for me with physical well-being as the foundation of yeah. health. You know, as health is the foundation so that if you have health, you can go out into the world and follow your dreams, do what you want, whether it's professionally, personally, you know, adventure, do everything that you want. Because no matter how talented or you are or how big your dreams are, if you don't have your health to get up off yep. the sofa and yep. go do things, you're not going anywhere. No, so I saw it as the cornerstone. Okay. So where was your first store? Westbourne Grove. Okay. That was right. the first one. That's, okay. Yeah, that's my baby. Excellent. <laughs> and how did you, so how did you go about sourcing those initial products then for that very first store? Well, I had worked, when I came up with the idea, we came back to England and I worked in a health food store mm -hmm. for a couple of years. So I knew the suppliers and it was then just pouring through the trade books and choosing a curated selection of products across all the departments, but also we introduced organic meat into what had mm. been a vegetarian arena. Mm. So we had a full service organic meat counter with British Soil Association organic okay. meat. Uh, we had a wet fish counter with sustainable fish, first one in the country, a juice bar. We were the first to do wheatgrass in England. So we brought in these new departments and then health and body care. So it was a full service yeah. supermarket, yeah, yeah, yeah. but with these extra bits. And then food to go came a couple of years later. Wow, but to have body care that quickly is... is yes, is I wanted quite... it to have everything. It yeah, was, it was yeah. to, it was, I wanted it to be the one-stop shop where you could buy everything, but knowing that, you know, we had these really corny slogans like, we read the label so you don't have to, oh, and nice. we don't only uh, ask, will it sell, but should we sell it? Yeah, and I yeah. read every label and tasted every product to make oh. sure that it was... Because we set the highest product standard. Yeah. We had the... We wanted the best food that was available. Obviously, what you try to do is inspire other other people to um, explore the organic world. Where, where do you personally get your inspiration from? Are there, are there any characters or people mm -hmm. that, you, that you admire and you find inspiration in, in the food world? I hate to say no. <laughs> <laughs> 
right. There's no one. No, that's not actually true. So if I go back to the past, because mentoring didn't really exist then, yeah. and I do a lot of mentoring now for startups, um, right. for businesses, yeah. the my role model was probably Anita Roddick. Not okay. food, yeah. but campaigning, yeah. sustainable, yeah. thoughtful, intelligent, totally. yeah. treading lightly on the earth. So she was a real role model for me. And Craig Sams, who's the founder of Whole Earth Foods and Green and Blacks, okay. was a very good friend of mine. And we were both on the Council of the Soil Association. We used to have these train rides up and down to Bristol. And I have to say, it was not a conversation. I called it the Craig Mini Series on <laughs> health and organic foods. And that really taught me a lot when I was just starting in the industry. But what I find inspiring now mm. are all of the young mm. entrepreneurs with whom I work who have incredible ideas, and they often come to me and say, why is no one doing this? Is it because it's not a good idea? And I say, no, you're the first person to think of it. Brilliant ideas with integrity, yeah. with sustainability at their core, and values at their core, and that's who I find inspiring. Great. Really. That's perfect. Perfect. So talking about that word, sustainability, yeah. um, it's we, loaded. <laughs> it's, it's, isn't it? How would you define that big word, sustainability? What, what, well, it's... It's getting harder and harder to be truly sustainable. And I was talking to a friend recently who was saying, you know, even everyone eating avocados because they're good for you or mm. coconut, fat, whatever, there are just so many people mm -hmm. in the world that as soon as we turn our hungry eyes towards something, mm. it becomes an issue. Yeah. So I think it has to be about being thoughtful, yeah. doing, treading, walking lightly on mm. the earth and mm -hmm. causing the least damage and mm -hmm. harm. And if you do, finding a way to turn it around. So right. it's very difficult yeah. to be black and white about it because yeah. there are so many, you know, this girlfriend was saying, you know, it's certainly, we neither she nor I consider cow milk to be healthy mm. or sustainable. Mm. But she said the moment you start talking about almond milk mm. and the water used to grow almonds or yeah. this milk or that, you know, it's a minefield. Yeah. But it's about being informed and then making intelligent, thoughtful choices. A slightly more practical question, um, if people were going to pitch their food products to mm -hmm, you, mm -hmm. or to Planet Organic, mm -hmm. I should say, what are the sorts of things that you're looking for? We're looking for all kinds of things, and we work with all kinds of people. It's I don't want to be too formulaic mm. about it, because what we're not looking for is non-organic versions of what we're doing already, mm. because we would never take an organic section. We do have work at, you know, completely organic sections within the store. We do some non-organic mm. products. But I have people coming to me and saying, this is a great product. And I say, yes, but we have a whole section of that that's organic. There's no way we would take a conventional yeah. product. So it's innovation, authenticity, values, mm. cutting edge. You know, some people have really great ideas where they're really a step ahead of the pack. Mm. And it's a real... Uh, dilemma for us because we obviously want to keep core products but we want to keep introducing new so there's mm. a real balance with that but often we will work with suppliers and young companies who have a great idea and don't quite know where to go with mm. it so often I'll introduce people to the buying team who will then kind of collaborate with them and say look if you're going to do that bar or whatever it is you might want to think about these mm -hmm. these ingredients or these flavors mm -hmm. which you know they can accept or reject mm -hmm. but it's because the buying team has such a cutting edge sense of what's happening in the marketplace and where things are going we hear all sorts of stories about ultra processing mm -hmm. and um you know additives and preservatives and whatever and there's so many claims and myths and whatever and, and how how do you try to get people to wade through all of these things about people saying, well, this is bad for you because of this, this is um, bad for you because of that. Organic is the highest quality, mm. and it is better for you and the environment. Mm. Now, some people can't afford it, some people can't afford mm. everything organically, so that's a factor, but I always say eat organic what you eat the most of. So right. if you live on apples or you're always eating dairy yeah. or carrots, then buy that, especially for children, yeah. you know, if you can't afford everything organically. Yeah. Then look at the label, and the shorter the label, the better. Yes. And I would say, if you don't, if you don't understand what something is on the label, then yeah. don't eat it. If your grandma <laughs> wouldn't cook with it in her kitchen, don't eat it. Yeah. So look for shorter is better. And some people don't know that items or ingredients are on the list, on the ingredients list, in order of quantity. Yeah. And some people don't realize that. So yeah. look at what's at this. So if you're looking at a cereal bar, and the first ingredient is sugar, mm. forget it. Mm. And Manufacturers will hide 
that. So they'll say flour and then maybe honey and then raisins, almonds, whatever, and then glucose syrup. And then and they'll have four different kinds of sugar, which if you add them all together, That's they'd be sugar. at the top of the list. Yeah. 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 So yeah. you have to be a little aware and read the label and make a decision for yourself. But then I think it's what what's important to you. You know, mm -hmm. if fair trade is important for you, mm -hmm. then go for that. Mm -hmm. And but that's not about quality. That's about paying a mm -hmm. fair price, which is important too. Mm -hmm. So then you weigh up what's important to you and then kind of stick to your guns, I think. Otherwise it is completely overwhelming. You made the point of saying and an organic food is more expensive. It is do, do you see any ways of it becoming cheaper, or, or is that is that kind of defeating the object? Well, it's it's the easy question to ask because, and initially when we started Planet, it was the, the journalists love to take that pop at us. Mm. But I, I have a couple of answers to that. One, quality costs money. Mm. Okay, cheap doesn't mean good. Cheap means no. cheap, and I don't want cheap. Yeah. You know, I don't want cheap many things, but I certainly don't want cheap food, yeah. especially when it's what I'm fueling my body yeah. with. Yeah. So you pay for quality, whether it's a phone, yeah. or shoes, yeah. or your food. Yeah. And we put money into what's important to us. Mm -hmm. So it, these days, English people spend a lot more money on leisure mm -hmm. and electronics yeah, than yeah. they did years ago. Yeah. Years ago, we spent a much higher percentage of our income on food. Mm -hmm. So it's what you put money into is, mm -hmm. is important to you. And sometimes criticism has been waged that organic is expensive and, you know, so not everyone can afford it. But the question is, why are they asking the question? And I had a woman recently say, well, lower socio-demographics can't afford it, mm -hmm. so they can't be healthy, which is, it's not a conclusion you can draw. Mm -hmm. There are people who don't eat well, and there are people who eat, like the food freaks like myself, who eat incredibly well and are, you know, crazy about it and that's a huge gradient yeah. in between yeah and these people being healthy doesn't mean eating organic food it's about cutting out junk food mm -hmm. reducing sugar reducing you know stop drinking fizzy drinks mm -hmm. there's a whole ton of changes that mm -hmm. can be made at that level of bad eating mm -hmm. before you need to say okay now we're fine-tuning with organic and mm -hmm. all of that it's a it's a spectrum yeah yeah and do you, how much of that do you think is is down to education uh, yeah, so a huge amount. No, a huge <laughs> amount. And I just think if you didn't learn it from your parents, yeah. we didn't necessarily. And the schools aren't teaching it where mm. you're supposed to learn it. So mm. if you're interested, you'll go off and learn about it. But maybe you're not and you just want to know how on earth do I cook mm. a good meal for myself. So mm. I would love there to be home ec in the schools. And mm. I think the best thing that's happening is the Soil Association's Food for Life program, okay. which they've been doing since the early 90s. And yeah. it is transforming the way children think about food yeah. understand food it's about it's a holistic program everything from growing to cooking yeah. to doing yeah. home ec to getting out onto an organic farm and seeing what it's like and that in turn is changing the way the parents think because yes. if you yeah. want to change culture which is tough you start with the children yeah. Yeah. and that's a very powerful worthwhile program I, I know that you're less involved in Plant Organic itself as a company, but, but wh where do you see the future going for, for Planet? We are on an expansion plan again. Great. So we have seven stores at the moment. Mm. We've landed our eighth in Queen's Park. Wow. But the plan is to open ten stores over the next five years, so okay. more than double. So we're growing. Within the M25, we're keeping yeah. it local. Have you found any advantages to being a woman in the food industry? Hmm. That's a question. Well, I think... It's breaking the mold. It's doing yeah. what I, when I set Planet up, I really wanted it to be a different kind of business. And nowadays, I think this is much more normal. But when I started Planet in 95, I wanted it to be very feminine mm. and very nurturing. Mm. And so the team felt taken care of. And when mm. I started, that wasn't so normal. And it was partly because when I started, was starting Planet, my mom said, she said, are you worried about having to be masculine or manly mm -hmm. out in the you know retailing mm -hmm. world yeah and I said yeah a little bit yeah and she said don't be she said be feminine yeah. be, be a woman and bring that into business which was very simple and very true yeah. and I did and that was part of our MO when we set up that that's where the respect came from I said we will treat everyone with whom we come into contact with the business with respect it was that yeah. whole idea of respect and caring 
What do you know now that you wish you knew or that you could use when you started out in 1995? Mm. The most important thing that I wish someone had told me, mm. and I wish I'd been taught as a woman maybe, mm. or just a child mm. growing up, mm. is trust yourself. Yeah. Trust yeah. your intuition. Mm. Trust that inner knowing. And by that, I don't mean your head. I mean trust your heart, yeah. what you feel. Yeah. And it's interesting because this whole respect thing that I referenced yeah. earlier, that is about respecting that voice, listening yeah. to that voice, trusting yeah. yourself. And I think there's nothing more powerful. And I teach my children that Great. with consistent relentlessness. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And then um, going back to so your new business, could you, could you tell us a little bit about that? And, yes. And, and where that came from and what it's about? Okay, thank you. So Beluga Bean is my second business, which I started in the last couple of years. And it was this idea of well-being that, as I said, started with me with health as the foundation. But Beluga Bean is about well-being across six spheres. Right. So it's about life and work, and it's a mentoring academy. Yeah. So the motto is, as it started with me when I was 19 years old, make it better. Yeah. So it's make it better, whether it's going into early motherhood, yeah. starting a business, or making dinner. Okay. It's how do you make it better? Because yeah. everything I do, I look at and I think, well, how can we do that better? How, why is it like that? You know, how can it be better? So it's an academy with the heart of which is our Connect Breakfast, which we run twice a month. And there's yeah. a Life Connect and there's a Business Connect. And it's sitting around and having the real conversation about the pinch points in life and mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. and finding inspiration and support to carry on. And that could be as specific as work-life balance, mm -hmm. dealing with children when you're starting a business, yeah. to more general themes around taking care of self, mm. creating that balance. Mm. It's all the stuff you didn't learn at school. And I think, you know, what did you, what did you learn at school that's really useful? Mm. Well, maybe math. Yeah. I use math and baking and in my accounts and some other things. But it's, it's all the stuff I think that really matters yeah. about relationships, communication, spirituality, mm. psychological well-being, mm. occupational well-being. Mm. And it's wrapped up in a really lovely way that we're a family and it's about community. Great. So it's bluebean.com. Excellent. Fantastic.